Wednesday. Welcome. <laughs> We first worked on the Crystal Ballroom creative together. Was that the first that one? That was the first time. Because oh I God, had come Crystal out. Crystal Revival. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which I loved. Which is a good one. It was really, really pretty. And yeah. I have a bride this year who's replicating the round circle. Stop. Oh, yeah. That makes at me that, so happy. At that place. That makes me so happy. Yeah. I met with her and she actually brought up and she was looking at everything from that shoot. So That's what we do. That's what we do the creatives, right? We mm-hmm. do them to, to challenge ourselves and to have creative freedom as a vendor team, but it's also to inspire when you see someone else pick that up. Yes. It's amazing. So it worked. So Perfect. you're inspiring, which is amazing. the point. That's the thing about the editorials. Our industry is so, so stressful. Like I don't think if you're in it, you understand the mm-hmm. stress. Um, so it's like the creatives to us are just, they're just an opportunity to let loose and have fun. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like, I mean, you've worked parallel side by side with us so much on wedding days. Like we will work our arses off for yeah. our clients, yeah. but we will always find time for a good laugh because we need that to like literally have like a moment of like, just let it go, let it out, have a laugh and regroup because it's, it's always event days, such a high stress, yes. such a high stress kind of scenario yes. because of the pressure we're we're under for sure and I think that's like you guys are operating now like you have four people on your team and yeah. you all have such a good like rhythm together and you have good banter and it's just it's an enjoyable work environment yeah because I've been with all of your girls actually and you yeah you know what it's like it was a, it's, it's been a long time coming it's mm-hmm. not something that quickly happened overnight and like if I think back to like where the business even started, um, it was starting with an idea of just wanting to always be the best we could possibly be for where we were in the industry and never wanting to be number one, always just wanting to be the best we could be every year, year after year. It's, it's slow growth and you know, building a team was one of the hardest things for me in the sense of, okay, how do I go about doing this? Because we want to grow the company, but you know, essentially, you're taking your name and you're you're expanding it to other people. And you know, we've worked with a number of different people over the years, but you know, Ellie and Bay and Tyra have been with us for I think we're going into now like our seventh or eighth season with them. That's amazing. And it 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 just it it evolves in a sense where when they started, all of them started as day of assistance with us. And just allowing them to also build a sense of understanding and loyalty to the brand Mm -hmm. so that when it came time to start expanding into their own events within our team, it it was something that was natural for them and they were already well invested in the company. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I could not, could not say more good things about them. Like, I know, I know in our industry, it's a blessing to be able to have a team. It doesn't work easily for a lot of companies. So Mm -hmm. for us, it's like, it's amazing because those girls are like worth their weight in gold yeah because you started 14 years ago yeah right you're in year 14 now yeah I think so 14 or 15 I'm not even sure the first now, yeah sorry pre-planner yeah what was pre-planner Laura pre-planner Laura was like I gotta go to university because yeah. my parents were giving me no other option which thank you mom and dad I'm so <laughs> happy that I I did that and it's yeah. funny because I actually had a conversation with lovely Mina from have a seat this week about it and she was like, what did you do in your past life? And I was like, you know what? I went to, to Queen's University. I got an undergrad in psychology. I went on and oh. got my bachelor's of education. And that was going to be my career. was going to be getting into teaching, which is where I started as like post-secondary education and then started the business on the side as something small to see where it could go. And I think I actually needed that. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I don't actually know if I would have, if I would be where I was, if I didn't have always something to fall back on. Right. Not that I'm not a strong entrepreneur, not that I'm not, you know, a go-getter and a hard worker, but um, it was really important to my family a sense of education, and I and I I developed that too. That I wanted to have something behind myself as well, mm-hmm. and also something to feel like you had a cushion to fall back on. So taking this big leap. And I mean, like, I still get the question from people nowadays of being like, well, like, why don't you just like, why are you doing this? Like, you could have your summers off and, you know, great hours and I'm doing it because I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I started out kind of thinking my route would be a little bit different. So sorry, mom and dad, that I'm not like fully executing those (laughs) degrees to their fullest potential. Um, But it, but it, you know what I mean? Like university for me, some of the best years of my life. 
Um, such great work ethic has to be developed there to make it through great friendships that were built and it just it gave me more years of maturity so that when I was finally ready to dabble in starting something of my own Mm -hmm. um, you know I I felt like I was ready to do that and I had enough experience behind me to do so okay so you graduate and then what like what stems the wedding planning was it your own or okay. was it friends no to yeah back so, okay so like I know this is the cliche thing and I feel like how do I differentiate this answer from every other person that's like I've always loved weddings <laughs> yeah. but legitimately like I have like I remember all my friends went to Western I went to Queens on my own and so I was paired up with a brand new roommate didn't know them from like anything and like I think my roommate probably thought I was crazy for the first couple weeks because I would spend all my time on the not.com pinning before like pinning would exist. Okay. And I remember like one day she's really? like, so like, are you getting married or like, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm single. Um, I've just, I've literally been it's drawn. Yeah. I have been drawn to weddings like okay. from an early age. I love them. I always say to people, you know, like there's, there's two events in life that bring people together, weddings and funerals. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, where all the different facets of people in your life come together and you get to Holy. Ooh, welcome to Toronto. Welcome to Toronto. <laughs> Somebody call 911. <laughs> but yeah, like I say like a wedding is like a funeral and I know that sounds morbid, but it just it's it's a it's it's a life event and I say like very seldomly will you have all those people together again. And I've loved it. I've loved it from an early age. I've loved, you know, wedding books. I mean, my my mom's side of the family is very Scottish and British. And so, like, we grew up with all, like, the Princess Di coffee table wedding albums. Aww. Like, it's just, weddings have always been a very strong sense of celebration within our family growing up as kids. So, mm-hmm. it, I just, I've loved them. So, um, what ended up starting to happen was um, my sister was getting married here in Toronto. And she was living out in Vancouver at the time. And so she needed some help in planning the wedding. And I was just finishing up university. And I was like, well, you know, I'm your sister. I'm obviously going to help you. So I kind of like became her like little mini me like wedding planner. And I always think like it wasn't that long ago. But you of all people will laugh at this because it, it really freaking was. Yeah. So I was going around to venues with my parents like VHS camcorder <laughs> yes. that was literally the size of like a city On the shoulder. TV yeah. massive camera yeah. being like it's okay if I just record the like the site visit so like I'm talking to the person who's like giving me the site visit recording everything oh, wow. coming back home taking the little cassette out popping into bubble wrap FedExing it to Vancouver so that they could put it into their VCR and watch the walkthrough of the venue and I'm like oh my god oh my god I love nowadays this story. like <laughs> Our clients that got married last weekend lived in Dubai. Like, we'd FaceTime all the time. Like, literally in the last 14, 15 years, how small the world has become is amazing. So that kind of sparked it. And I was like, you know what? Like, I was always a little bit of a type A personality. So I think I just, like, took that opportunity to just, like, be super organized and plan and try to help them budget and execute. And I was going to meetings on her behalf. Um, and that's when I met Rachel Klingen for the first time. So, you know, our 15 year history started, you know, way, way back when she was actually wow. hired to do my sister's wedding. So that kind of started and spawned it. And then from there, I was like, I really like this. I'm going to see what I could do with it. But I mean, at the time, like I was finishing up university and I was, you know, expected to kind of go into a career. And mm-hmm. um, so I started the company as like something that was just small. Do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and it was perfect. It was you know, we're going to get into it. And um, I originally opened as Laura Kelly Wedding Design right? with my best friend Kelly. And her and I were like, you know what? We both have other jobs. We're going to try to just, you know, test the waters and see where this is going to go. And it, it just started with no expectation, but a lot of heart and a lot of hard work. And so because of that, I don't think there was an opportunity to fail. It was just, let's just make, just go make our best go of it. Yeah. And so we did. And we got super, super lucky with great opportunities. Um, my best friend Jen um, emailed us one day and was like, you need to check your email. You need to check your email. And I was like, why? And she's like, just check your email. So I'm like, oh my God, what's in my email? So I check my email and lo and behold, she had gone ahead and like, oh my God, Jen, love you for this still. Um, and had like blindly emailed the producers of Rich by Poor Bride okay. and yes. was like, I have two amazing friends who are like legit wedding planners. I think they'd be great on television and super awesome as a duo because I know you don't usually cast duos. Um, here's our website. If you're interested, I just wanted to share. And I was like, 
oh my god I, I was just so touched by the gesture I'm like that's just so nice when someone goes out of their way to kind of sure. nominate you for something mm-hmm. so she's like now read the net like keep scrolling down and I'm, I'm like scrolling through and like instantly she has a response from the producers saying like well actually we're casting right now for new planners if your friends are like legit have them reach out to us so literally within 48 hours Kelly and I are in the production studio of Buck Productions in Toronto doing our first like on-screen audition and we're like I love this. What the, like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And what was so great about it was, again, it was like we went in with went into this with no expectations and a lot of heart. And so to be recognized by somebody like that of our friend who nominated us, we would not we would never have done it on our own. Yeah. Not that we didn't, we weren't those kind of people or we didn't think we could do it. It just, it wasn't something necessarily it that we would have probably thought of at yeah, that moment. It wasn't you on your what? roster to be on a, on, my on, roster a to be on a TV show. on a TV show. But somebody saw it and was like, somebody saw these it. guys should be on TV. And like, lo and behold, that was it. We were, we were casted. So what so. happens in the audition? Um, so in the audition, they ask you a ton of questions. Okay. Um, like it's the, you go through your usual interview Q and A. Yeah. And then they actually bring in a couple and they actually film mock scenes. Oh, okay. To see how you are on camera, how you you know I guess how you speak, your mannerisms, poise, all of that. I right. mean, at this time, and I'm, I mean, like I've been like the number one fan of Rich by Poor Bart. So I'm again, I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, we were blessed to work with an amazing team there for the last two seasons of the show. So the show ran um, until 2010, oh, wow. and then um, so we did. I think the show was it did a sixth season when it ended, and for a Canadian reality television show, like to finish off six seasons was a pretty good accolade for them. So um, love nothing but love for the Buck Productions team, um, Jim and John and Noreen. We had amazing producers that we worked with and uh, did some really fun weddings that were here in Toronto. We did an amazing episode with a couple. Of out in Vancouver and then we got involved in their spin-off show um, which was a concept called rich groom poor right. groom okay and that was where the groom basically gets to hijack the bride's wedding okay. and make all the calls and so I remember with Kelly like <laughs> our greatest challenge was like we're like we're fun people like we're always up for great TV but like these are people's real weddings right so like some of the grooms would be like you know let's do this and you'd be like yes <laughs> for people on their couch watching they'll be like what was the craziest uh, thing do but you remember for the bra- you know like just like let's just take off like, all the flowers from the centerpiece and let's put like mobile planes and it's like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's right. fun but it's right. like it's different do you really you know what i mean like do you really want to do that so, I mean, they were just, you know, ideas sometimes that people would have. And I mean, the show was amazing for letting every couple just truly be themselves and shine. Yeah. But it always amazed us, like, what some people would show on national television. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we had, we, but we had a blast. Like, we literally had a blast doing the show. It was amazing. And it gave us just a really good platform yeah. into the industry. And then um, at the same time, too, again, like... Just karma aligning. Um, Kelly and I were separately watching um, BT in the morning one day, and a couple just by fluke in the audience had gotten married on live television. And Frank opened his mouth and was like, you know, um, if you want, why don't we have the wedding here on live and national television? And so I'm calling Kelly to be like, we, we should pitch doing this. Like, this would be uh, so cool. Okay. So again, we just like threw something out there like, hey, like I saw this couple getting married on live television. If you guys are interested, if you're actually going to do this, we'd love to help. And so again, like 24 hours later, we're into BT Studios and meeting with the producers and we have to do a whole visual pitch proposal on how we're going to help them create and pull off this live wedding on national television, Mm -hmm. which I've learned and I always reference and my clients will say, we want a really short wedding ceremony. I'm like, well, technically to be legal in Canada, it needs to be seven minutes long. And I know that because no segment on a live morning show is seven minutes. So that was our like biggest dilemma with this was like how to pull this wedding together. So we had the wonderful ceremony. Burnett Gibson officiated and she was amazing with the with the talent on the show and helping us keep a fluid ceremony going so Mm -hmm. legally we could get these two guys married live on television while still also letting the guests who are watching feel like they are part of the whole ceremony because we did a whole documentary leading up to it about like just following along Mandy and Harry coming on the show updating the viewers where we're at in the wedding planning process and just letting them know that like yes this couple is literally 
get to be married. That's live amazing. On television. So did they did it stretch the seven minutes? It did. Or how did they? they yeah, were it like, did. It did. We had we just decided like we just have to kind of keep it going. We right. have to cut off certain parts, like move signing to a different segment. So it was just I know that's one thing I always get from clients like I don't want to have a long ceremony. Right. I'm like as long as we hit the seven minute mark, we can be legal. So so those two things wow. were like a huge platform to the launch of our company. And then what happened from there is you know as our company grew, our our work hours grew our commitments to the business began to grow and um kelly had decided at that time and it was a it was a long time coming in the sense of it was a decision i know that she took a great amount of time to make Mm -hmm. um and one that i was you know devastated by for many reasons but also so happy for her by because she was such a near and dear friend was it just the business for her wasn't the best place to continue and finding something that was a little bit more family work life balance was going to be better for her and her family so you know with like tears in our eyes we were like okay this is the next chapter um and that was perfect because at that point in time we had literally just hired bay and ellie and so i was like okay like girls i need you Mm -hmm. um and so that was their kind of natural transition into making laura kelly wedding design become lauren co events And, you know, that was probably in 2006, I think. No, sorry, 2013 was Kelly's last wedding. I remember in the fall of 2013 was her very last one. And so since then, it's been, you know, amalgamated into Laura and Co. events. And we've been functioning ever since as this team now of four under our new name. So that's kind of the history of where I came from, where it started. But yeah, those, I think, you know, Rich Bride, Poor Bride and our work with BT really gave us a good platform. Were you able to do your own weddings as you were doing the TV show or was your whole career with the TV show and doing those? Nope, so we did all of our own weddings. Yeah. And the TV show were our own weddings. Oh, okay, so So it all blended, So it all blended, yeah. And so like we, we essentially became the planners for the couples that we were assigned to that were cast with the show. So, you know, we would do exactly what we're doing right now is we'd get together and we'd film certain things, but like, it's a reality show. So like when we're talking and we're shooting, you know, we might finish shooting a scene and then spend an extra, you know, 30 minutes with the vendor, you know, discussing a few more details, but they were, yeah, they were our legit clients as well who we were planning with too, so. So if somebody came to you today and said, do you want to do another show, would you do it? Was the experience like, (laughs) like obviously it was a good experience in a way, but Um, do you think you could do it again or is it... Yeah, you know what? Like, I, I yeah, I loved it. Yeah. And, and the thing that I loved about it, too, was I just, I got to learn a whole different industry. I got to learn about, you yeah, know, the behind production. the scenes and making of a television show and just, you know, learning about, you know, how the sound guys work and just learning about different aspects of camera and lighting and just the, the whole concept right. of what goes on behind the scenes when we're sitting at home and we're watching our show. And I mean, the world right now is filled with reality. I mean, it's 90% of what most of... I know people are watching these days besides some really good, you know, Netflix uh, series (laughs) that have come out. Um, So for me, like, I I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And yeah, I feel like, I feel like Canada needs another good wedding show. Like a show. But I always say, like, I'd love it to be something that's more authentic documentary style. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no need to put emphasis on, like, creating, you know, the drama. Like... Mm -hmm. Every oh, wedding see, story yeah. is its own beautiful kind of organic, fluid, winding path. Yep. It's just it's such an insight into, you know, the journey yep. for certain couples. So, yeah, I would definitely do it again. That's cool. Yeah. I, uh, like, I knew you were on TV, but I didn't know, like, the evolution of how it happened. So yeah, yeah. And like I said, it was, it was a whim learn. from, like, my best friend Jen who, like, emailed the producers and was like, check your email. I emailed them and they've already responded back. You have to contact them. They're casting right now. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so you went to Vancouver. Did you do any other traveling with that? Or um, No, no. Everything else is in Southern Ontario area. Yeah. But, yeah, we did do a large, probably our largest wedding to date. I think our reception, we were up to about 1,000 people. Wow. Yeah, it was a large, large South, what uh, background? South Asian okay. wedding. So mm-hmm. multi-day South Asian. What venue? <laughs> uh, oh, God. Do you remember? It was in 2009 that we shot oh. it. So I don't even remember, which is terrible of me. But like it was. It was a massive it was, venue, Yeah, obviously. it was a big one. Yeah. And the best thing that we came up with with that wedding was, and I love um, this couple to date for this, is in their culture, it's traditional to greet all your guests when they come in and take photos with them. And um, Suki, our bride, was just like amazing. She's like, I don't know how I'm going to stand there and greet like a thousand people. So yeah. we came up with this idea. We're like, look, let's get you guys ready, dressed up, hair and makeup. Let's do a photo shoot of you, do cardboard cutouts. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we'll have that readily available when guests come in on the wedding day. So it was amazing. To take the photo with the cardboard cutout? Yeah. So guests were basically <laughs> like came in and instead of like the couple having to stand there and shake yeah. a thousand people's hands, they had cardboard cutouts that were identical to what they were wearing on the day, hair and makeup to a T. Yeah. And it was perfect. That and so, is the yeah, best by the thing. end of the night, those cardboard cutouts were like on the dance floor <laughs> with people. Everyone was dancing with them. It was amazing. And that's before social media. Um, was yeah, it? that would have been like pretty much. Uh, we had, I think I had, we had Facebook. Well, Facebook I don't know if we but, had Instagram. But God, not Instagram. God, don't say things like that. It makes us sound but old. Isn't it, no, but it's crazy yeah. though. It's crazy right. to imagine because social media is just, it's, it runs the industry now. Mm-hmm. And to think, yeah, that it started without it. So, so here's a question and sticking with social media. Yeah. Um, curious to know. So like shooting video and then photographers, we obviously have the content to put out for Instagram. Yeah. Like how do you find it curating your own content f- as a planner? Because yeah. like you, like, what do you like to showcase as a planner? on like obviously the details that you put into the day is that kind of like one of the things that you like to showcase that you guys are able to think outside the box kind of thing yeah I mean you, you want to showcase some of your like most creative concepts and ideas mm-hmm. because I think that's what people resonate to most I mean yep. we can all appreciate a beautiful centerpiece and a lovely portrait so in one sense you're you're looking for that original content that can help give your your company a bit of branding and identity um, but on the flip side to that too, like I, I prefer that we run a really balanced, a really balanced program. Do you know what I mean? In terms of what people see when they come to our Instagram feed. So, yeah. um, first and foremost, it's, it's always, always, always using, I like professional photos or professional video content. I, I just think that it's a certain level of professionalism when you mm-hmm. come to a page and you see professional images. So right. we really rely on the collaborative effort of working with all the photography teams yep. to help us out post event, to give us, um, to give us good content to share. And like, you know, sometimes the most jaw dropping detail shot of a room can also have like as much warm, fuzzy feeling as just capturing like a freaking awesome moment. Like yeah. I remember a wedding a couple of years back um, and still one of my favorites today for this reason, amazing, amazing couple. And they had um, the bride's grandmother be the ring bearer. And it was the most oh, like touching, cute. adorable thing. This woman was just an absolute angel. She took the job so seriously. And I mean, one of my favorite images still on our Instagram page is like little Nona, like walking down the aisle, carrying the ring pillow and just the beam on her face of being like, you know, my granddaughter asked me to be in her wedding. And so, yes, you know, like I said, the most beautiful room is going to gather a lot of likes and a lot of reposts and saves. But it's also about just celebrating the core of what weddings are. For is sure. there a celebration of, of love, a of family, of friendship, and of just incredible emotional moments? Mm-hmm. So it's really balancing that to showcase that that's really what our team is about. It's mm-hmm. about really well curated designed events from a range of budgets, but it's also about really, really giving our clients the ability to experience incredible moments and the too. Moments. And it's I think too, like for me, I always say, you know, people will. People often like come to us and say like, you know, we love your work and you're this and you're that. And it's, it's amazing to get, it's amazing to get positive compliments, but like my intrinsic number one always response is like, thank you so much. Like it's always a team effort. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's no one company in in a team of vendors that is ever responsible for what, for such a collective outcome. Mm -hmm. So for me too, I think our Instagram page and social media is also an opportunity to showcase the team of other talented individuals that we're blessed to work with. For sure. You know, so when you look at an image, it's so important to us to always credit and to tag you know, I don't want our, our, our viewers to have to, you know, interact with a photo by tapping on it to see who the team is. I want you to be able to, as you to just look. scroll through to see those names popping out because, you know, like we don't, we don't make the bouquets. I can't, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, you know, hand sew linens. Um, you know, I can't carpet a room for you. There's, you know, there's limitations. So you hire the best of the best in every field. Mm-hmm. And our job, you know, as the planner of the event is to creatively help conceptualize and to work with the best of the best for that client to bring it all together. And so to me, social media Instagram is a way to really celebrate the team approach of what our weddings turn out to be because they're not Laura co-event weddings. They are literally like 
an army of, of people who create these things. Yeah, it's a collaborative. It's such it a is. collaborative industry because it is. Every, there's so many different moving pieces. Yeah. And what's cool is that you guys are like the head of kind of everyone and making sure that everyone comes together to do it. Yeah, everybody has a piece, right? Yeah. And it's, like I said, if we didn't have amazing videographers and photography, we wouldn't have any visual content to share. Question about planning in terms of like when yeah. it comes to cocktail hours, because I know last year working with you a few times, yep. you guys have like inventive cocktail hours based on either the background of the couple or whatever, you know, whatever they want to give their guests. And I know one is like a perfume bar that we had experienced, yeah. which is pretty cool. But do you guys like sit together in your meetings and kind of brainstorm ideas for cocktail hours or do they just happen naturally? Or is there couples that require like a certain thing that they want and experience? Or? There sure is. So like number one for cocktail hour is it usually does. And I know this might sound like a really like, oh, or like put the brakes on it answer, but it depends on budget. Like that's mm-hmm. an area for people that if, if you have a little bit of extra to put into, you do. Um, But for some people, it's just, it's not an area that they can afford to spend on. So when it comes to cocktail hour, we're obviously first and foremost gonna work with what our client sensitivity is to budget. And is this a good place to put something in? As soon as they kind of give us the go ahead to that, or they kind of give us the feeling that they wanna do something a little bit more, it's like looking at what's the feeling, what's the tone, what's the experience. Number one, cocktail hour is social, and it's about food and beverage. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really key when we're coming up with concepts for our clients not to like overstep those things. Um, But I mean, our wedding last weekend, for example, so fun it was down in niagara on the lake and outdoor vineyard saw, like it was just, it was a much more kind of laid back in the sense of like being in the outdoors but the clients love them rachel and Zoll really wanted to give their guests a super fun experience from start to finish mm-hmm. so one thing we had um that tied into cocktail hour was um a, an amazing photo booth but i mean photo booths have been done and i know like even i've gone through a phase where i'm like oh please no more photo booths yeah. um but again the industry is so inventive and have come up with reinventing the wheels so we got one of those like amazing outdoor little vintage buses that you can come into and like I had people coming up to me being like this is actually a really good photo like they were actually impressed that they got so they had this really fun creative photo booth to actually step into very retro vintage um it was an all-white wedding so guests were actually invited on the invitation by dress code to wear all white oh wow yeah. Men and women? Men and women. So there white were like suits, some serious everything. pimp and white suits, which were oh, amazing. Cool. Um, but we said like, fear not. If you if you don't have anything white, like we'll help you accessorize on the day of. So we had a live flower bar during cocktails. So guests could go oh. up and they could have a beautiful wrist corsage or a boutonniere. Some guests were getting floral lace, hair pieces, headbands. And they make them on the spot. All in white flowers. So right. if you didn't feel like you oh, had cool. enough weight on you, you could accentuate that way. Um, we also had a live artist that was um, sketching the ceremony, and so she moved in transition with cocktail hour two. And so guests again, like I think of like those days, like Sunday mornings, like what was that guy's name? Ross something. Oh, and his name's eluding me. And he had that big like afro of hair, and he'd just sit there in his little paint like paint easel, and he would just paint. And, just paint. and my dad used to watch him every Sunday morning. I can't remember what this guy's name on is, TV. It was like, yes, it's from like the seventies, <laughs> and like it was just Art you, attack? you'd be watching it, and you'd be like, "What's he doing?" You're like, "Holy shit, he's making a forest!" Like it's oh, just mesmerizing. Cool. So we had the lovely Olga there to do live painting, and guests were just loving sitting and watching that. So um, as the ceremony is happening, they're in the back, in the background, of the aisle basically yeah, painting, painting, that. and then That's guests are just beautiful. there during cocktail hour. We moved her into dinner also, so that guests could continue to watch the painting um we had lawn games because we were like we're outdoors we want people to mm-hmm. enjoy feel casual and it's like when you look over and you see like a group of people playing like cornhole chatting <laughs> and laughing and catching up you're like life is freaking good yeah like life is like when's the last time you picked up a beanbag and playing cornhole do you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like yeah. it's just it's it's those slow down things mm-hmm. so sometimes for cocktail hour it's just giving guests a lot of things to do that are like super fun but are also just like outside of the box entertainment that they wouldn't normally find for sure um another idea yes so we love as you mentioned the perfume bars it's a really neat concept which i didn't know i didn't know existed but you essentially get to go up and choose which fragrance you like and you walk away with your own yeah rheumacology is an amazing company that we work with in toronto and um they'll set up a stunning bar you can customize and brand the bottles that guests get to take home too but their staff is amazing 
They, they interact really well with guests to find out a little bit more about their preferences in terms of scents and smells and just auras and energies mm-hmm. to combine a custom mix that really represents right. you. So it's not like you come up and you get to mix, you know, the, the you know, Katie and Ben perfume. You get to come up and mix the Corinne brand, like blend, the right. Laura blend. And then they package it all up and put your name on the little gift bag. And so when dinner's over, you can come pick up your gift bag. Yeah, it's adorable. Yeah. Other things that we've done is um, the cigar rollers, which mm-hmm. we love. Fashion Illustrators is a new one that we're starting to use a I lot. I love that. I've seen that at yeah. a few events recently, and it's really, really cool. And People they do it so that. quickly. Yeah. Like, they only have to stand for maybe five minutes, I yep. think. And then it's like five to seven minutes. You get a beautiful, so like, neat. fashion illustration yep. watercolor of uh, your outfit. Mm-hmm. You can do you and your date. I've done groups of friends, families. Especially if um, you're going to put that much money into an outfit to go to a wedding. Yeah. Like, why not have it in a cool, like, obviously you can take a yeah. photo, but I mean, why not change it up and have something else you yeah. can frame? It's and I mean, it's one thing, I think, if your um, ceremony reception or taking place in one one location but if your ceremony is elsewhere when guests arrive for the reception the cocktail hour which for most people is an hour it's your your guest's first experience of your wedding so it is a really good place to make an impact and kind of set the tone for what the wedding is going to be about Mm -hmm. um while also like very equally balancing that it's a social time for people so like you don't want to kill them with live music you don't want to make them like go through obstacle courses of lineups of activities they want to be able to drink they want to be able to eat some great food and chat first and foremost Mm -hmm. but should they feel like endeavoring into an activity you've got some really fun things for them to enjoy some cornhole or something Cornhole. that they haven't done since they were some 10. Cornhole, some cornhole, some giant Jenga. I mean, who doesn't love a game of lawn croquet, right? Giant Jenga like, is big, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. neat because the difference in outdoor and indoor weddings, right? Yeah. It's like finding the activities in the outdoor weddings, like yeah. Niagara, and then coming to an indoor platform and trying to keep them entertained with like yeah. the drawings or yeah, the illustrators. Yeah, or even just some really great entertainment. Like the next, uh, this next coming weekend, we have an amazing group called Blue Soul coming in. They are like your like amazing acapella, like old school, oh, cool. like just which like, weekend? Uh, next weekend. Yes, so, yes you're shooting it. I'm there. Um, the souls are named. Shout out to them. <laughs> They're amazing. And so our weddings of the four seasons, mm-hmm. and like when guests open their elevator doors and walk out, like all of a sudden they're going to be serenaded by live entertainment. Cool. That's one thing that I have to say is where I would always suggest our clients do put money into is really consider some good elements of live entertainment. Mm-hmm. Only because I think it's the one thing that we don't experience as a culture enough of anymore. Um, and I think when we see things in person, like live entertainment, live art, I think we just, it really is one thing that I think people appreciate. Mm-hmm. I know as a kid growing up, we always used to go to, like, to the theater to watch musicals and things like that. And I feel like like just that aura is kind of like dying out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I know as a parent, I try to bring my kids to stuff to be like, let's go see concerts and let's go see shows and let's, yeah, more let's appreciate stuff. live art. Yeah. Um, so I think whenever you can bring that element to your wedding, I think it's one thing that people are like, oh, like it's not just beautiful music. Like I feel like I'm actually experiencing a little bit of art culture, mm-hmm. which is also another level to the event. What do you think is like one of the favorite, your favorite moments from the day? Not from a planning perspective, but like... During the actual day. What do you enjoy the most, do you think? Um, I think the moment I enjoy the most is the moment I, like, literally set the bride down the aisle. Yeah. And it's it's not, like, just because of that, like, cliche, oh, the walk down the aisle. But it's it, it's such a climax to the day. And, um, and people often say, like, when is the point that you kind of can sigh out? And the time that I really, like, can go, okay is the brides now started down the aisle. Right. Because up until then, timing is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just the sequence of the ceremony is so key. You just you want the musicians to be cute at the right time, that photo and video are ready, that the officiant's there, mm-hmm. that people are walking. And you just want it to be seamless so that when we that music starts, whether you have 30 people to get down the aisle you know, or, or three, if the bride has or hasn't seen the groom before the ceremony, I just want it to be perfection. So for me, I think that's my most enjoyable moment because I just get to stand back and take it in for a minute. Yep. Everything kind of comes to a pause. She's There's no background way. noise. Yeah. And I just get to kind of take it in and, and also feel a little bit of the moment. Yep. As soon as the ceremony is done, it's like run, run, run again. Yeah. So I think for me, that's that's really it. It's really, there is like a moment of a brief pause. Yeah. And it's just like a collective silence. Exactly. The doors may or may not be open at that point, but then yeah. everybody stands and you yeah. can hear everybody standing out of their yeah, chairs. Yeah, it just and then the room becomes still cool and you just moment. you just go back to just the moment mm-hmm. which is just this bride this groom mm-hmm. um and, and it, i mean for me too over the years I've, I've helped a lot of our clients navigate 
some challenging aspects to the wedding ceremony in terms of processions, you know, if the bride doesn't have a father in the picture, um, you know, some of my brides have just been like really strong women and I don't want someone to give me away. And like, how do we kind of navigate right. these things? So I've also helped a lot of my clients come up with really creative procession routes mm-hmm. that really speak to them as a couple and honor who they are, where they're, where they're at in their life. And, um, you know, I've seen some really great processions that are completely not the norm where I know like this fits perfectly for who these people are, for their story. Mm-hmm. And like, they're just, they're great moments. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a little bit with every family, right? That you have to, like, everybody has a different story. So yeah. there's like a bit of a juggling act between how to navigate through yeah. different situations, basically. Yeah. And I mean, and that's like, that's why too, I mean, sometimes I can come home from a meeting and my husband's like, how was your meeting? Like four hours. Yeah. I'm like, you know, we just, we just got a, got started talking. And I mean, that's the thing like weddings, they will, they will force you to confront so many different aspects of your life that on a day to day basis as a couple, as a family, you can kind of just gloss over, you mm-hmm. know, you mm-hmm. have to sometimes confront difficult situations with family, family relationships. So, you know, sometimes, you know, figuring out things like ceremony and speeches and family photos and how dynamics are going to be balanced and how everyone's feelings are going to be considered and how people's feelings aren't going to be hurt. Sometimes I can take four hours because, you know, these are people's lives or their families. And the way you, you treat a wedding can have, you know, repercussions on the positive and negative. So you want to make sure that you give due diligence to those sensitive items with a client and really spend time finding the right way to navigate through them. Ladies and gentlemen, the pro. <laughs> Seriously, you yeah, you have like uh, such a detailed job compared to, in a way, like what we do. <laughs> there's there's they're different layers they're and just levels so different, to but, it. Yeah, I mean, you have an experience with a family for like up to a year, I think, mostly, right? Is Sometimes that kind of? We've done. I think the longest as I've had, I've had two and a half years as wow. as a planning process and an engagement. So the average couple is with us for about a year. A year sometimes yeah. a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of more average. Um, but as of late, I'd say like the trend is changing a little bit. We're getting a lot of cl- couples that are planning less than 12 months, you know, that are just getting yeah. engaged, realizing that they're ready to move forward and for lack of better words, don't want to spend two years of their life focusing Focus on this on and know yeah. that they can condense it. So yeah. why not? Yeah. I always say anything's possible. Anything's I think possible. Six weeks is the shortest we've planned. Yeah. And what'd you do with the dress? For six weeks? Yeah. You better get in like today. Just like, got it. Sign my contract, and here's your book. Here, here's your booking at like white and client yeah. belts and this. It's like no, go and get right away. Right. And for most, you're buying off the rack. You're yeah. looking at samples. You're looking at trunk shows. Because um, you can buy off the rack and just have it altered. Yeah. In like in the city. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But and for yeah, you can't. You cannot order in six. Yeah. That's, in six weeks. That's but tight. again, like again, prioritize right. Like yeah. if you want to wait six months for your dream dress, or do you want to go out and find your dream dress? You know, right. on a whim. So yeah. Yeah. anything is possible. You just have to have the right mindset. So are there any dresses that are kind of the hot take coming up? And <sighs> fashion. You can think of in fashion. Um, so is lace a big thing this year? Like, fill me in here. Lace. <laughs> what am I going to see? Is, yeah, lace applique details. Lots of texture. Mm-hmm. Um, we mm-hmm. are definitely getting away from a bit more of the big, massive, poofy dresses. Okay. Um, I've seen a lot of my brides just going a lot more form fitting. Yeah, I've trying seen that. To, yeah, mm-hmm. trying to feel like they're not carrying around like eight layers of tulle. Yep. Um, sleeves. S- sleeves are definitely making a comeback. Yes. yes. Love the sleeve. I do love the sleeves. The cape has been coming back now saw for that. a couple I, of years, yeah. which I'm like, please don't go yet. I'm not <laughs> ready to let you go. Yeah. Um, but sleeves definitely have been coming back, which is a great thing. Um, and I mean, we went through literally probably like seven years straight of like the strapless. Yes. Strapless is on the table still, yep. but there are a lot of beautiful ways that a lot of amazing designers have started to incorporate sleeves, like the lace cap even, sleeves, yeah, um, the- spaghetti straps. I, I hate to say it, but I think the halter is starting to make a comeback too really? as well. If scrunchies are back in I style know. and like bicycle shorts, yeah. then the halter wedding dress vintage. is sure to make an appearance. <laughs> vintage is back. Yeah, vintage is definitely back. I shouldn't have like thrown out all my clothes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of our brides are just going a lot more streamlined. And I mean, still the popular trend is more than one dress. Do you remember the first time you did a first look and you were kind of like, how is this going to go down? Did you have that moment? I did. When did it start? I, you know, well, Listen, I was married in 2007 and I didn't do a first look. Right. And it's that and not having a band over a DJ. So for those who want to know what is the pro regret, it's not doing a first look yeah. and not 
not having a band. Yeah. I had a DJ. Yeah. A great DJ, but yeah. I wish I wish I would have invested in live entertainment. That was my one okay. like my one thing from the yeah. entertainment perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but even for myself, I remember thinking like I was just caught up in the fairy tale idea of you see each other first at the altar. But we were married um, at Liberty Grand. We had our ceremony in the courtyard right into reception and just oh, that's I, nice. it it was, but it was like my husband's like bridal party side was huge mine was huge like we had a lot of photos to take we missed almost all of cocktails i was literally like neurotic with a clipboard at my wedding like there's photos of me like with my clipboard going through my list trying to keep everybody on schedule (laughs) so you did your own planning yeah yeah i did i did oh yeah i should have i should have hired a day of coordinator and let kelly like fully enjoy the day because it was her and i who were like we got this she's in she's in the corner with the wine and yeah literally exactly So um, I I regret not doing it. And the reason why is because, so my first client that did it, I remember being like, ooh, okay, like you modern couple, you. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I saw it happen. And then I saw it happen again with another couple. And I was like, you know what? This is so, so special. And what I realized is, you might have that like this is how it is on TV in the movie moment in Hollywood when you see each other for the first time, but it's not really a moment when it's happening in a ceremony as much as it is when it's you and your person privately on your own being able to actually experience the moment express it and Mm -hmm. live in it because Mm -hmm. you walk down that aisle and the second you get there it's not like there's a pause for you guys to stop enjoy look appreciate each other the officiant does their job which they should and begins the ceremony and i've seen so many first looks some of the best video and photo content come out of the first looks Mm -hmm. and it's just it's it's raw it's natural and Mm -hmm. in a day where you are surrounded by so many people and you're pulled in so many different directions because it's perfect lighting to go do photos right now entrees are served we need you back in your seat for a speech nona is back from the bathroom and is ready to take that photo (laughs) with you we've been waiting for it's it's just a time for you and your person to just be you and your person yep and sometimes you know the moment lasts three minutes sometimes it's seven minutes but it's just the bride and the groom just standing there and just enjoying the moment with each other being able to share beautiful sentiments and words which at the altar you can't you, do, you can't do. Mm-hmm. so from a timing perspective from a planner perspective it's a win mm-hmm. we love it mm-hmm. it makes our life easier to do a first look mm-hmm. but again some of my clients to this day are very very particular on what they want and that mm-hmm. matters most so mm-hmm. we, we go with it um, but having seen it, I used to think it was kind of like, oh, this is untraditional, but fast but forward now. to like 2019 and I'm yeah. like, go for it. Yeah. If it works for the timing, you won't regret it. Yeah. And I've asked clients that. I say to sing each other before the ceremony for the first look in any way, take away from the walk down the aisle. Never has a client post wedding site. It does. If anything, they say it allowed them to be more excited and enjoy the moment because mm-hmm. the nerves were gone. Yeah. They'd already broken that ice. And now it was just about really living in the moment. You can sense how they start to relax once they see each other. So like the whole day, because that's the buildup is that moment. Yeah. And then they get to be with each other and spend a couple of hours together before they have the moment where they're in front of their family and friends. Exactly. So they get, they're calming each other. And then, yeah, so it's exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And you don't necessarily get that interaction at the, at the altar, like you said. So we're going to do one last question. Okay. And this one, this one I enjoy just because our audience is some brides, obviously, who are learning and obviously industry people as well. Yeah. And so what would you tell newbie planner, Laura? Newbie. What kind of advice would you give to anyone starting out and planning now? What do you think would be a key thing, a takeaway that they should think about? Honestly, like take your time and learn your craft and kind of, be prepared to be prepared to understand what the industry is before you get into it. Like I, nothing irks me more than when people are like, "Oh, you're a wedding planner, so like, do you like have like the headpiece and like the clipboard?" You know, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just like JLo." You know, right. and it's like, "Oh my God, what we do is so so much more than that." So mm-hmm. I think it's like get to know the industry. You know, contact some planners. We have people contacting us all the time. You know, to say we'd love to just like come in, shadow, just kind of get our you know, get a sense of what what it's like in a day in life of planner to see something we want to do. But just like take your time and just don't don't strive to be somewhere, but where you should be at that phase in growing a business. And I mean, I say that because that was kind of Kelly and I, and then the girls and I always our approach is just always be the best we can be for every client 
and and grow grow naturally do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. there's just there's certain things that i know now that i didn't know seven years ago that i didn't know 14 years ago um i know them through the growth of the industry and and don't don't try to jump too many too many steps at once right when people hire you they're hiring you based on who you are and how you present yourself to be and the reputation that your company is going to give and the value. So you have to be able to back that up. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be able to sit there with your clients when they're asking you questions and have answers readily available on the spot. Mm -hmm. Um, You also need to be able to think and troubleshoot on the spot. And all of those things come with experience. So, you know, start, start where you're at. You know, know know what the industry is a little bit about to make sure it's something that you feel like you really want to get into, and just do your best at every wedding, and just don't take off more than you can chew. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that was our best thing is you know, like we started out small. We started out doing you know, little day of coordination package services just to learn a little bit of the industry. Um, networking is also really key because, like I said um, earlier. It's a team approach. Every single event you do is a team approach. Um, you as a planner are not like the gatekeeper of the event, and you are not the mastermind of the event, nor are you the puppeteer of the event. You are you are just as good as the staff that is there to help clear the tables and who is there to, you know, um, do the most smallest of jobs. Mm-hmm. Everybody's job is equally as valuable to the success of an event. So mm-hmm. I think you really have to make sure that you start to network and get your name out there and build really positive relationships because we all want to work with good people. Good people that are there to support us, to put the couples number one, you know, who on the day of, you know, there's nothing that warms my heart better than looking around and seeing that something's gone gone awry and, you know, Karen, you put your camera down and you're like, how can I help? What can I do? Right. And it's like, it's that mindset that has to be a collective team approach. I think if you come into the industry with an ego, mm-hmm. um, it, it may help you thrive in the initial phases, mm-hmm. but it will also limit your growth and it will start to deteriorate it because in our industry, you are so emotionally invested in what you're doing and you need to work with people that always as a team will have your back and will really see themselves as equals. I think that's important. People start small, learn your craft. Learn your craft. Which is right? big, assist assist with other people. Don't take on like a massive tented estate wedding as you know in your first yeah. season. Like there's just certain things that we did that I'm happy we did mm-hmm. um, because it, it really allowed us to grow naturally and to grow like in a natural course of succession as opposed to trying to sell ourselves as something more than we were. Right, right off, right out of the gate. Exactly. Gates. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is like working with somebody mm-hmm. and learning it and taking yeah. the steps forward. And I mean, in this day and doing. age, it's so easy to like, anybody could just open a business overnight and just mm-hmm. and put an amazing looking website together with beautiful images. And it's it's really easy to, to become an overnight success. But to have the backbone to actually produce it and to ensure that you're walking away from every event feeling like you did your really best and the clients got the best that they deserved Mm -hmm. in terms of service you've got to gain that experience cool yeah well thank you so much for coming having me give everyone a wave i'll give Give everybody a wave i thought we were going for like a high (laughs) five i was like oh my god is she gonna high five me yes always a high five halter dresses are coming back so is the high five like what's happening next love it yeah this is so fun and thank you this is such an amazing thing that you're doing for our toronto industry Uh, we absolutely love this idea and are just so grateful that you are investing your time and sitting down with us yeah. and I and love the opportunity this platform. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I hope everyone who's has sat in this chair has been like, thank you, Corinne. Yeah. We honestly are just, it's the talk of the town. Everyone just loves uh. the idea. And, <laughs> well, um, I think it's so important though, because honestly, like we work together, but we don't necessarily know how it started or get even insight on your perspective from what yeah. you do, right? Because we all do our own little jobs. No, but so, this is an amazing platform. So, so thank good. you for including me cool. and our team well, within it. I know some of the team is going to come in yes, and sit down and meet with you girls too. girls are coming in too. Girls are coming Maybe in Maybe we do like so. a post round table with all the girls oh my god post wedding like we're talking I'm thinking in the like fall. jada jada pinkett's like red yes. table and i'm yes. like jesus those <laughs> things get dicey pretty hot yeah. we'll have to upgrade to some vino for that yeah we'll but definitely yeah. have vino on for that but uh i think that would be a really a really cool thing to do awesome so well thanks, thanks so much and we'll see you this weekend okay awesome <laughs> bye. bye high five double, double high five